afternoon, everyone. This is Yankee, the real deal Messiah here with you uh, with your latest tropical update here on uh, Tuesday, uh, September 24th, 2024. And as always, the thoughts of this video here are mine alone. And in making decisions, please consult with the National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, uh, your local officials uh, for the most up-to-date information uh, regarding your area when it comes to this uh, tropical system that we are going to be uh, focusing on. And today we're going to be getting into uh, Tropical Storm Herlene. Uh, tropical Storm Herlene this morning was designated as a tropical storm. And it is something that we are very concerned about here in the YouTube weather community. And I was surprised that this was not named a tropical storm. Um, during the 5 o'clock morning advisory, I will get into that uh, briefly here uh, because this was firing up a lot of convection last night and I was really concerned about this being a tropical storm. I was watching a couple of live streams and by the way, shout out to uh, Pat's Path uh, Predictor. Um, that was one of the live streams that I did watch last night. So... Um, Woke up this morning, it was still PTC 9, and then 11 o'clock advisory, it was a tropical storm with 45 mile per hour winds. But right now, it is a tropical storm that is at 50 miles per hour, and we're going to look at the analysis here, and of course, a um, couple of uh, tools that I'm going to be using here um, to get into this, so... Um, we're going to try to locate our tropical storm. So our tropical storm is like right over here. Now, I'll draw this out for you. And um, you can see right over here. And it's it's where the wind shear, um, it, it, it seems to be decreasing um, as the appearance of the storm seems to be uh, taken on a more feathery appearance and um let me get that off of over here for you guys and get back and show you that uh feathery appearance and this feathery appearance means that the outflow around the storm it seems to be approving and the overall environment seems to be getting more favorable for strengthening now, in fact, uh, the ship's model here, and uh, we will uh, get that here for you. And I, this is the ship model, and you can see the um, the wind shim um, over here. Uh, it seems to be to pointing towards uh, wind shear values of four to eight knots uh, to be present over Helene beginning tonight and continuing right up to landfall. And if this occurs then it's going to be very favorable environment for a significant strengthening. And in addition, I want to show you the ocean water temperatures here. Um, the ocean water temperatures right now, you can see over the southern and eastern Gulf of Mexico, that is extremely warm and it's going to act like rocket fuel to help strengthen Helene. So Helene is here right now and I will... Um, Go back and draw this out for you people. And you can see if Herlene goes right here, it, it makes a track just like what we're seeing here with the uh, with the hurricane. Look at all of that water that it, it is right over there. It's not a very good um, situation that we're seeing right now. And, um, and in fact, um, this makes me continue to think that Helene is going to be a major Category 3 hurricane. Uh, I will say it like this. Um, I am going to go with Category 3 hurricane, 120 to 125 mile per hour winds uh, when it makes landfall Thursday night right in the area of uh, Apache Bay uh, with a track that could take the uh, eye wall right over Tallahassee. And that is the one thing that uh, does concern me is um, if that does happen, then you have 120 to 120 mile per hour wind gusts, and that will occur 
across the entire eastern part of the Florida Panhandle into extreme southern Georgia. And that's something that, you know, if you're a sports fan, and I will um, elaborate on it, of course, you know, in Georgia, you got a big series coming up um, with the Atlanta Braves and uh, the Philadelphia Phillies. So that is definitely... um, That's concerning. And especially it's in a very important series because it will determine uh, the postseason. And now you have this uh, weather system right over here that is becoming a very, very big concern. So, um, and that includes, you know, St. Mark's, Crawfordville, Apache Okia, and Tallahassee. And, And that will include... Albany, uh, Dothan, and uh, Valadosa, Georgia. So it really needs to be emphasized that Helene is going to be a very large hurricane in overall size. And because of this storm surge, you got the strong winds and the heavy rain impacts. That is going to affect a very large area on the eastern side of the storm. Now, a notable storm surge is likely along the entire west coast of Florida. Uh, tropical storm force winds are expected across much of the Florida Peninsula and as well as uh, far inland as southern and central Georgia and parts of South Carolina as well. And heavy rain with flash flooding will be likely across all of the southeastern United States. Now, Going back into the maps, and the one thing that I want to show you, um, and this is something that I really noticed about this storm here, is um, why are we seeing some wind shear and a lack of much organization over the past 24 hours? Well, um, that would be to the fact due to the fact that you had a uh, Hurricane John right over here. So Hurricane John uh, made a uh, landfall uh, near Acapulco last night as a Category Three hurricane, and John's uh, outflow is contributing to one of the reasons why you have the stronger wind shear, um, the stronger southwesterly shear over Harleen. Now. The wild card that is uh, Hurricane John, it might lead uh, to more eastward displacements of the convection and possibly even uh, eastward displacements um, of the center. And because of this, we really need to watch for the continued possibility of a more easterly track here um, by the NHC. So... Something that is being shown right now, and again, um, that is something that has to be highlighted um, with this storm as well. So, uh, overall forecast of Helene, and uh, we're going to get into this as soon as I can take this off, and here we go. And going back into it, and here is the overall forecast of Helene. It hasn't changed a whole lot since yesterday and it looks like that Helene is going to enter the southern Gulf of Mexico so you can see by the time we get into Wednesday afternoon um, it is a tropical storm um, it could be a borderline tropical storm could be a borderline hurricane uh, the H wharf right here has it as a 977 um, some of the other hurricane models uh, continue to have it as a strong tropical storm going into as a hurricane and so by the time that you get into um, Thursday, and this is Thursday, the D-Day, right here, uh, you can see that this storm um, is 100 miles west of Tampa, Florida. And some of the models do have it as a low-end Category 2 hurricane, and it is going to reach the area around uh, the eastern Florida panhandle and the Big Bend area of Florida 
by Thursday night as a Category 3 hurricane. And y'all think this is pretty easy and you can lock that in, right? Well, guess what? Not so fast. Um, the angle at which Helene approaches Florida, it's going to be very important because, like we said, any last-minute shifts... Um, in the track, that's going to lead to a large difference to where Helene crosses the coast on Thursday night. At this point, it seems pretty likely that Helene is going to be steered north. And the one thing that I want to get back to is you got low pressure right over here. You have this low pressure. I, I will draw this out for you right here. Low pressure and that low pressure that is located over the central Mississippi Valley, and you got that high pressure ridge right over here um, in the Western Atlantic. Look at this. And based on the weather patterns alone, it seems pretty likely that Helene will make landfall as a major hurricane on Thursday evening somewhere in the eastern Florida panhandle, the Big Bend area of Florida, or the northern nature coast of Florida. And with that being said, because of Florida's unique geography, the exact landfall point is actually hard to do when a storm approaches from the south or southwest. So let's say a storm like this, okay? And I'm going to try to draw the track. Okay, I can't really do this here. Um, but, but if you do have a track that goes, let's say, 10 to 15 miles over and it does that, right? That's going to lead to a shift of 20 to 40 miles with respect to a landfall location in Florida. And this can be a big deal when determining storm surge impacts and wind impacts. And this means that every small shift in the track of the storm will need to be watched and considered very carefully. So let's go back and uh, let me show you the model guidances here. And um, going in and the model guidance from uh, Tropical Tippets, by the way, shout out to them, Dr. Levi Cowan. And you can see that um, if the model guidances are correct, we're likely to see Helene move right into uh, Alapache Bay or the Big Bend. Um, however, if the models are not resolving that upper level low pressure system over the middle uh, Mississippi Valley correctly, it changes things. And there's definitely a scenario there for... Helene to go in and track very closely to Tampa. And I will um, draw this out again. So let's say it's right here and then it makes that track. Look what it does. That's exactly what could happen. It, it's a difference of what is going to happen. So we do have several wild cards really to get into when it comes to this um, track. So um, but the guidance continues to show the track that uh, takes Helene inland near Cedar Key rather than Appalachian Bay. So, for now, my range of likelihood landfall areas, um, I, I will draw this out here. It, this is where I think the landfall is going to be. Somewhere around here. Um, by the time that um, we get into Thursday afternoon, and as I already mentioned, any slight shifts in the track of Helene, that is going to make a huge difference in both wind and surge impacts for individual locations. And obviously, 
you know, slight shifts in track when in that range is going to make a huge difference in win and surge outcomes for individual locations. So, for example, it's not possible at the present moment to say which um, complete certainty whether Tallahassee will have the core of the hurricane go right over producing 120 to 125 mile per hour wind gust or not. And it's also not yet possible to say with any complete certainty as to whether Tampa is going to see the 5 to 10 foot storm surge or whether a 10 to 15 plus foot storm surge. If Helene does continue to do that track like this. So um, if it does continue to do something like this, then that's going to be a concern right there as well. So uh, that's pretty much what I got when it comes to um, all of that uh, track stuff. So bottom line simply is this. And we're talking about a major hurricane. Likely to strike the Gulf Coast of Florida by Thursday night somewhere between uh, Apache Okia and Cedar Key. And hopefully you guys prepped today you do have uh plenty of time to uh prep tomorrow because those are your days to prepare in the florida panhandle because conditions are going to deteriorate on thursday and also not to mention to west and central florida so make it count so the storm surge here uh let's get into it uh want to get into this as part of the video here so this is going to affect a lot of people and it's going to be quite significant in some areas here so you're going to have storm surge heights of uh 10 to 15 feet that looks likely in the big bend area of florida um alligator point uh st mark cedar key uh steinhatchee crystal river and homosassa and this would be as bad and i'm just gonna say this right now if not worse than what occurred during adalia last year now in tampa you're getting uh five to eight feet according to the national hurricane center and that is going to be as bad or worse than adalia so for planning purposes i would strongly advise you to use adalia as a blueprint to prepare and in fact i advise you to prepare for a storm that's a little worse than adalia the wind field and the size of this storm is expected to be much larger than adalia and because of this the surge impacts could be worse wind and i will use the weather bell here as um because it is expected that uh, the quick forward speed of Herlene when it makes landfall will lead to tropical storm and hurricane force winds occurring well inland as well. Um, and as you can see right here from uh, the weather bell, um, the area of the tropical storm and hurricane force winds, this is huge. Both coasts of the Florida Peninsula you can see it right here, not just the western, but also the eastern part of it. You're likely to see tropical storm force winds with 60 plus mile per hour wind gusts occurring as far east as St. Augustine, Jacksonville, Brunswick, and maybe even Savannah, Georgia as well. So how far inland the hurricane force winds extend, that is going to depend on how strong Helene is when it makes landfall and how fast it's moving. So with that being said, Helene has a very real potential to be a destructive inland wind event for North Florida, much of Georgia, and parts of South Carolina. And let me see if we, can, we can't get South Carolina here. So talking about the big question, the million dollar question, widespread power outages. And let me uh, actually get the... The 18Z, because that is actually running. Um, 
on the weather bell. So, speaking about that, and you see right here, they have a 969 storm coming right in into the panhandle. So, um, let's try to compare it uh, with the earlier run, okay? And see if we can do it here. See, it's a little bit to the west, but let's go in and and also not to mention too the windshield wiper effect does come into play. You see what I'm talking about? Any ships with this storm, it's gonna make a difference when it comes to wind gust. So you're looking at that. That is major hurricane uh Force wind gusts right over here. You look at Tampa right here. You're getting the hurricane um, winds as well. And then we talked about Georgia, right? So uh, we were talking about power outages, widespread significant power outages, and wind damage. So we're talking about metro areas of Tallahassee, um, Atlanta, uh, Macon, Savannah, Columbia, Charleston. Greenfield, Spartanburg, and Charlotte. My advice to you guys, prepare for a very strong wind event. And this means to prepare with at least a few days of food and water. And that is especially when you have these extended widespread power outages. So, um, again, this is going to be a very large hurricane. And its impacts are going to infect quite a bit of the southeastern United States. Um, so here is the plan. Um, I will continue to uh, send out frequent updates on Helene. Um, especially tomorrow. Um, I didn't get a chance to do a video this morning. But um, tomorrow morning we will do a morning video. And then Thursday, um, I plan on doing, um, I plan on going live when the storm actually does make landfall on Thursday. So, uh, these updates and videos, they're going to give you the most up-to-date information on the latest impacts of surge, wind, heavy rainfall. And with that being said, you need to go into hurricane mode. Now, I've already mentioned, take the rest of the day today, even tonight, all day tomorrow to prepare across the Florida Panhandle, North Florida, Central Florida, and along the West Coast of Florida. So, that's going to do it for this video here, guys. Um, and by the way, we will show you the track here from the NHC. That's one thing that I did forget. You can already see what I'm talking about. Hurricane warnings right here um, in the Big Bend area. You can see the hurricane watches actually do extend inland. Um, if you're in eastern Florida, you you got the tropical storm watches. There are tropical storm warnings, in fact, uh, in Tampa and Fort Myers, Sarasota. You can see what... This is very serious. And... Um, And you can already see right here in the uh, the Yucatan tip, Hurricane One and as well. So, um, really a lot to get into. Um, pretty much that's all I got on this um, Tuesday. Until then, please subscribe to the channel. I am out, guys, and stay safe.